Hi everyone, my name is Niki Loppi and I am a Solutions Architect at NVIDIA. Welcome to the sixth talk of our NVAITC webinar series on scalable deep learning. Today I will be talking about deploying models with TensorRT. First, let's kick off with an introduction. At this stage, we should be all familiar with the model training step, where you use existing data to train a deep neural network model. With the term inference, we mean the final step of deep learning, where you use a trained model to process new inputs. In other words, you infer something from the data via your neural network. Previously, there has been a lot of discussion about techniques for accelerating the model training part. So here we would like to emphasize that efficiency is just as important in inference. For example, consider autonomous vehicles. From the moment you give a driving assistant model a new input from a sensor feed, it is crucial to have very low response time to the resulting steering decision. Another example would be voice-based assistance. When you give it a command, the response needs to be quick to maintain any sort of interactivity in the application. Another aspect that is important to consider in the context of inference is platform portability. Inference needs to be run everywhere, from edge devices such as robots, self-driving cars, all the way to data centers. TensorRT is a software development kit by NVIDIA for high-performance deep learning inference, and it aims to address these two challenges, high performance and platform portability. It includes an inference optimizer and runtime, which can deliver low latency and high throughput inference for a wide range of platforms. For example, Jetson embedded devices, NVIDIA Drive autonomous driving platform, and of course, also data center GPUs, such as the new Tesla A100. TensorRT is also compatible with all major deep learning frameworks. So you can just use your favorite framework to train the model and use TensorRT for inference. Here's a summary of the five technologies that TensorRT implements to optimize the inference performance of your model. Let's now go over them one by one. The first technology is kernel fusion. Its purpose is to improve GPU utilization and optimize memory storage and bandwidth by combining several kernels as a single kernel that gets executed only once. Basically, the idea is that when you launch a single kernel instead of multiple kernels, there's much less overhead since you don't have to do as many reads and writes to global memory. The kernels can be fused vertically and horizontally. To open up this concept a little bit, let's consider an unoptimized neural network below on the left. With the vertical kernel fusion, we mean that consecutive kernels are combined as a single kernel, which gets executed only once. For example, performing a 3 by 3 convolution, adding a bias term and running it through a rectified linear unit would all happen in a single kernel. With horizontal fusion, the idea is that when you have identical kernels, which take the same input, but just use different weights, you can combine the kernels by making a single kernel wider in a sense that it processes more of these operations in parallel. The output from these wide horizontally fused kernels will be automatically split up if they feed into different kernels further down the graph. The second technology is precision calibration. Deep neural networks are often trained with single precision or sometimes with mixed precision as shown in the previous session. However, during inference, we do not backpropagate which is the step that can be difficult to keep stable. So therefore, in inference, it is actually easier to get away with lower number precision. TensorRT achieves this by using an automated parameter-free calibration step to change the weights and activation tensors into lower precision using a representative input sample. And this is done such that the model minimizes the accuracy loss. This naturally results in smaller model size lower memory utilization and latency, and hence higher throughputs. This also allows effective utilization of our tensor core technologies, speeding up the floating point arithmetic even further. The third technology is kernel auto-tuning. 
There are multiple low-level algorithms and implementations for performing common operations, such as convolutions. Kernel auto-tuning optimizes the execution time of a kernel by choosing the best kernel from a large library of implementations. And this is done based on your configuration, for example, batch size, filter size, and also your target platform. The final two technologies are dynamic tensor memory and multi-stream execution. Dynamic tensor memory ensures that memory is allocated for each tensor only for the duration of its usage. This naturally reduces memory footprint and improves memory reuse. Multi-stream execution is essential when you scale the inference to multiple clients. This is, a, this is achieved by allowing multiple input streams to use the same model in parallel on a single device. So that was a short summary of TensorRT's abilities. TensorRT has Python and C++ APIs for developers to incorporate these technologies into their own applications. For end users, a lot of the work has been already done for you and you can just simply rely on converters. The main idea of a converter is that you take a model that you have trained with your favorite deep learning framework, you run it by a converter where all these optimization steps have been abstracted and you end up with an optimized model. Then you can just simply deploy it on your target platform. So now let me give you a quick walkthrough how you would use a converter library called TRTorch to optimize a PyTorch model for inference. Some of this might be quite basic for you, but I would like to show you all the steps starting from saving a PyTorch model to disk, converting it to a TensorRT module, and finally deploying it. On the left, we have a skeleton of how a training code might look like. On the top, we have the necessary imports, in this case Torch, as well as torchvision.models, which construct ResNet models that we use as an example. On the bottom, we have a main which builds the ResNet, pushes it onto the device using .cuda method, and a call to a train function to start training of the network. The train function is here in the middle. In the function, you would have your training loop, which updates the network as it trains. A PyTorch model can be saved using torch.save. Here, we do not save the entire pickled model object, but only certain information about it as a tarball as follows. First of all, we save the model state dict, which is a Python dictionary object that contains information about all model related learnable parameters. We also save the optimizer state dict, which contains information about the optimization state and hyperparameters. In addition, we also store some auxiliary information about the model, for example, how many epochs it has trained already, what is the architecture of the model, for example, ResNet 18, as well as what was the maximum accuracy that the model achieved during training. Moving on to the loading step. Since in the previous slide, we only saved the state information of the model, not the entire pickled object, we first have to initialize the ResNet model from torchvision.models again. Second, we can load up the tarball and extract all the information it contains. The states for the network and optimizer will be provided using this load state dict command as such. Finally, you can switch the network to the evaluation mode and push it onto the device using .cuda.eval. Now you would be ready to run new data through the model to make new predictions. However, this model would not be TensorRT optimized. Let's now look at how you would convert the loaded model to the TensorRT format using TRTorch. First, you need to import TRTorch as such. Again, we use the torch.load command to load up the train network. In this case, since we only plan to use it for deployment, we do not have to extract the other information from the tarball. Just load the network state dictionary. The first step of the conversion is to just in time compile the network as a torch script module using torch.jit.trace. Basically, this removes Python dependencies that normal PyTorch models have. 
After this conversion, you can now compile the Torch script module as a trtorch module using trtorch.compile command. Please note that TensorRT wants an example input to do the optimization work. So in the middle, you can see that I have just prepared a dummy input that represents our input data. In this case, that would be three channel image data of size 224 by 224. You can also provide TR torch, what precision to use, as well as what is the maximum batch size it can handle. In this case, I'm just using a constant batch size. After these two compilation steps, now the model is optimized and ready for deployment. We can see that using a converter is really straightforward, since all these optimizations that we talked earlier have been abstracted to this single trtorch.compile call. Basically, the developers of trtorch have used the TensorRT API to create conversion pipelines for standard PyTorch layers, so it can do the conversion automatically. However, trtorch is relatively new, so sometimes you may run into some PyTorch operators that are not yet supported. In this case, you would have to write a converter for this op yourself. There are some instructions on the trtorch site how to get started with these. With this slide, I just would like to quickly demo how to save trtorch optimized models for later use or if you plan on moving them to other platforms. Saving is as simple as using torch.jit.save. Also loading is just as simple. You can just use torch.jit.load in your deployment application and you're good to go. Finally, let's move on to an image classification example that we have coded up. Here, the network that I'm using is ResNets and the dataset is ImageNet with a thousand categories. On the right, you can see some examples from the validation dataset. As you can see, there's quite a bit of variation. There can be dramas, dogs, snails, even Christmas stocking. On the left, you can see my inference loop and for benchmarking purposes, I run the model on all 50,000 images in the validation dataset. In the loop, there are a few things that I would like to highlight to ensure that all the benchmarks numbers are unbiased. So at the top, I start with six warm-up batches. Then after that, I call torch.qda.synchronize to wait that the warm-ups are done. In the actual inference loop near the compute output comments, I measure the time that it takes to perform the inference. Here, it is important to have the torch.qda.synchronize before collecting the end time to ensure that the inference execution is all done. Finally, here are the inference performance plots. The plots show the average amount of images processed per second. The first bar is the PyTorch unoptimized model. The middle one is the TRTorch optimized model with single precision. And the right one is the TRTorch optimized model with half precision. On the top of the bars, you can see a speed up factor relative to the performance of the unoptimized model. The left plot shows the results for ResNet 18. In this case, using the TRTorch optimized model gives you 1.5x speed up with single precision and with half precision, the speed up factor goes as high as 5.5x. And what's nice about this is that all these models achieve the same accuracy of 0.693 on the validation dataset. The right plot shows the results for ResNet 50. In this case, the speed ups are even slightly higher. It's 1.6x for the optimized single precision model and 6.4x with half precision. In this case, the accuracy was 0.758 and the FP16 optimized model decreased the accuracy by only 0.1%. I think these are very nice speed ups, especially considering how easy it is to use a converter. I hope this was a useful introduction to inference optimization with TensorRT via TRTorch. I encourage you to look into these websites for more information and examples. The last link directs you to our DLI course on TensorRT with TensorFlow. Please have a look at that as well 
if TensorFlow is your go-to framework. Thanks very much for your attention and now I would like to open the floor for questions.